Hey, what's up everyone? It's time again to endlessly loop through this hellish hallway and try to uncover some of the mysteries that still remain in the terrifyingly spooky Silent Hills PT demo. In this video, we'll be primarily discussing the murderous father and his motivations, as well as the mysterious talking bag that appears roughly midway into the demo. This video is technically part two of a PT series that I had started a few months back, but I'm writing this video in a way that it doesn't require you to have seen that prior video. However, in the last video, we go over all the grisly details of Lisa's murder, and if you'd like to check that out before or after this one, I'll have it linked in the description below. Like I said, I've tried to craft this video in a way that it can stand on its own, but the Lisa video might help to add more detail and context to this one. But I think that's enough preamble, let's talk PT. So let's start with the father. In the last video, we talked a lot about how he murdered Lisa, but we didn't really discuss why. My basic assumption is that the father was brainwashed by some kind of entity, which manipulated him into killing his family, and there are a few clues that lead me to this conclusion. I think 204863 has something to do with his conditioning, since at the end of the demo, our last hallway ends with the screen glitch while the numbers 204863 are repeated like we're in a trance. 204863 I don't think this is just a case of schizophrenia either, because the opening radio broadcast suggests that there have been other fathers who have committed very similar crimes in the recent months. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his 10-year-old son came to investigate the commotion, the father shot him too. His six-year-old daughter had the good sense to hide in the bathroom, but reports suggest he lured her out by telling her it was just a game. The girl was found shot once in the chest from point-blank range. The mother, who he shot in the stomach, was pregnant at the time. Police arriving on scene after neighbors called 9-11 found the father in his car listening to the radio. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. They said it was like he was chanting some strange spell. There was another family shot to death in the same state last month, and in December last year, a man used a rifle and meat cleaver to murder his entire family. In each case, the perpetrators were fathers. For some additional context from the last video, I don't believe that the Lisa murder is described during the opening radio broadcast. Instead, I think it's a separate murder committed after those ones. As it relates to this video, I think Lisa's husband is different from the fathers described on the radio, since the radio father was found in his car by the police. But we can see his car keys on the table, which leads me to believe that the radio father and Lisa's husband are separate. Along with that, we later hear the radio broadcaster state that the father hung himself with a garden hose that he found in the garage, something I don't think Lisa's husband would be able to do if the police found him in his car listening to the radio. After killing his family, the father hung himself with a garden hose they had in the garage. Regarding Lisa's husband, I think that the garden hose suicide is how he dies, and that it occurs in the garage. If that's correct, then it could explain why we wake up in this cement room. To me, it kind of looks like a small garage. Especially as we exit the hallway, it looks like we're going into the garage, only to be sent back to the beginning of the hallway. The garage could be our character's transition point from the real world into Silent Hill slash Purgatory. Of course, that may not be the case, but it could explain why we start the demo here. Next, let's take a step back and continue talking about how the father may have been brainwashed. During the demo, we hear a different voice that gives us commands. This voice, which I'll be referring to as the Sinister Broadcaster, seems to speak directly to us through the radio, most notably during the section where Lisa can attack us. He's the one who says, Look behind you. I said, look behind you. We can clearly hear the difference between the Sinister Broadcaster and the regular broadcaster here. Retrieved the rifle and shot his wife as he was cleaning up the kitchen. You can't trust the tap water. The son came to investigate the commotion. The father shot him too. I think the sinister broadcaster is also the one who provokes us to murder Lisa, since we can hear his voice telling us that now's the time, do it, while we hear Lisa's murder take place. Now's the time for 
society is rotten to the core. I'm talking while the fine, outstanding folks got their wet, their cut, got their jobs pulled out from under us. Yeah, you know what to do. Now's the time. Do it. We can hear an extended version of this clip via an unused audio file that further reinforces this point. Okay, listen up, and don't you move. Need to take a piss? Hold it. The show's got just 60 seconds to go, but I got a message for all you folks out there in Radio Land. So sit tight and bend an ear. Now's the time for action. Our society is rotten to the core. I'm talking to all the fine, upstanding folks got their welfare cut, got their jobs pulled out from under us. Yeah, you. You know what to do. Now's the time. Do it. Your son. Send him on his way to heaven. By your own hand. It's not too late if you act fast. You, what did you do? Right in front of everyone. I'm putting this on the news, you psycho murderer. It's also interesting that this voice seems to turn on the father after he commits the murder. Why the sinister broadcaster turns on him after the murder is still strange to me. Maybe the sinister broadcaster is more of an external manifestation of the troubled thoughts of the father. I'm not entirely sure, though. But after committing the murder, the father most likely felt panicked like there was no going back. With the sinister broadcaster stating that he's going to turn him in, that could be why the father chooses to hang himself. Regardless, the use of the radio to communicate with us is especially interesting, since radios have been very important in prior Silent Hill games. The radio is typically used to warn us of approaching monsters by emitting a loud staticky noise when we get too close to one. That could be why the sinister broadcaster is often accompanied by a static noise, unlike the regular broadcaster. Okay, listen up, and don't you move. Need to take a piss? Hold it. The show's got just 60 seconds to go, but I got a message for all you folks out there in Radio Land. State police say this string of domestic homicides appears unrelated, though it could be part of a larger trend such as employment, child care, and other social issues facing the average family. So I believe the sinister broadcaster is the voice that guides this father and all other fathers into carrying out the murders. I also think that there is a reason the fathers are selected. My guess is that fathers are selected based on how easily they can be manipulated. In the opening broadcast, the reporter states that the police suspect that the murders have to do with employment, childcare, and other social issues facing the average family. At first, this sounds like the police are just writing it off, but there could be some merit to their theory. The fetus later informs us that the father lost his job and became an alcoholic. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. This is supported by all the alcoholic bottles and cans littered around the house. The fetus also mentions that this forced Lisa to get a part-time job as a cashier, a job she was only able to get because the manager was attracted to her. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly ten months back. This line in particular has led many to believe that Lisa may have had an affair, and the fetus may not even be the husband's. If so, this could be a partial motivator as to why the husband murdered Lisa. Beyond that line, there's really not much else to suggest an affair, though. My personal theory is that Lisa didn't have an affair, and instead it's all in the husband's head. So if an affair is a partial motivator for why the husband might have been driven to kill Lisa, I think it's only a perceived affair. Whether the affair is legit or not, I still think that the social issues facing these fathers make them susceptible to manipulation by these entities. Regarding Lisa's husband in particular, killing might have been in him this entire time. On the pause screen, our brightness setting is indicated by a brain scan. Based on my Google findings, the PT brain scan looks very similar to brain scans of psychopaths, since both have very sizable dark spots. If this is what the pause screen is hinting at, then it could be another factor for the murder. 
Lisa's photo fragment is also hidden in this lower right area of the brain, and if this chart is accurate, then her photo would be residing in the temporal lobe, which is partially responsible for auditory information. The father seems to be experiencing a lot of auditory triggers, so this could line up. But I'm no neurologist and this could be reaching a bit, so I'll leave that theory here for now. Speaking of voices though, there is still another voice coming through the radio that we should discuss. During one loop in particular, we get a different voice speaking to us in Swedish. Here's what it says. Close your eyes. Let your ears listen to the radio. Do you hear my voice? Can you hear your own soul scream? Let us choose. My voice that tells the future, or your tortured mind. Well, what do you choose? You can choose. Your life, your future. Wise as you are, you may have already discovered it. Yes, the radio drama from 75 years ago was true. They are here on our earth, and they monitor and see all. Don't trust anyone. Don't trust the police. They are already controlled by them. That's the way it has been for 75 years now. Only our best will prevail. You have a right. A right to become one of us. So welcome to our world. Very soon the gates to a new dimension will open. Regarding the radio drama from 75 years ago, the general consensus online is that the voice is referring to the War of the Worlds radio play from 1938. Basically, the radio drama began with an actor interrupting the current broadcast with breaking news, announcing that aliens have invaded Earth. Many listeners believed the broadcaster, which created panic amongst many Americans, even though it was all fiction. However, our new radio voice is stating that the War of the Worlds event wasn't just a play, but instead was a real event where aliens invaded. To further reinforce the idea of aliens, the sound effects during and after the Swedish broadcast sound like UFOs. Believe it or not, aliens are a thing in Silent Hill, but they are typically used as joke alternate endings. I think aliens being suggested here is more of a fun reference for the demo and not something that would necessarily have played out in the full game, but I guess we can't know for sure. It also sounds like this alien voice and the sinister broadcaster are working in tandem. The part about don't trust anyone, don't trust the police, seems consistent with don't trust the tap water. The sinister broadcaster also repeats 204863. He's also the one who tells us that we've been chosen. You've been chosen. Something the Swedish voice seems to be guiding us towards as well with the lines, You have a right to become one of us, so welcome to our world. Very soon the gates to a new dimension will open. The Swedish voice is heard again at the end of the demo when the screen starts to glitch, because it seems to be the same voice repeating 204863. 204863. 2048. I'm still not sure what 204863 means yet, but it seems to relate to that new dimension and might even be some kind of trigger phase. The way the baby is crying in the background while 204863 repeats could be symbolic of how the father could hear nothing but those numbers during the murder and drowned out all other sounds. 204863 But there is one other time that we might hear this voice, and that's when we meet the talking bag. They sound very similar to me, but it could be just the same voice actor and not necessarily the same character. I honestly go back and forth on whether or not they are the same voice or not, so I'm interested in hearing what you all think. Here's the two back to back. That's on me. Washing in front of myself. 
but it wasn't really me. Watch out. The gap in the door. Since I can't say for sure, I don't want to commit one way or the other. But since we're on the topic of the talking bag, let's discuss what he represents. I walked. I could do nothing but walk. And then, I saw me walking in front of myself. But it wasn't really me. Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? The common consensus is that whatever is in the bag is whatever Lisa rips out of us when she kills us. When we die, we can hear Lisa doing a couple things. We hear her undo our belt and zipper, and then we hear gross, fleshy noises like she's digging inside of us. Like many things in PT, details are widely left open to interpretation. The talking bag is no different, with multiple theories on what Lisa removes and puts in the bag. Common theories are that the bag holds our head, our dick, or even a fetus. I think any one of these could be valid, but I tend to lean towards it being our penis, or something else which I'll get to next. After we gouge it out and start to exit the room, we can see the words, Forgive me Lisa, there's a monster inside of me, written on the wall. This leads me to my other theory that Lisa attempts to remove the literal monster inside of us. If the Swedish voice and the bag are the same voice, this could work since Lisa might be trying to help us out by removing that monster. Even if it's not the same voice, I still think the bag is part of us somehow, since it gives us a warning of what's beyond the door. Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. I have another, more meta theory about the talking bag as well. To preface it, you can only talk to the bag if you've died to Lisa. If you make it to the next loop without being killed, you'll never get this voice line from the bag, which leads me to believe that he is purely there to warn us as a remnant of our previous death. If Lisa does kill you in this loop, you'll talk to the bag, and then you'll return to the same loop where Lisa killed you last, but you won't be able to die this time. It feels a lot like a redo or a respawn, so basically the talking bag could be a remnant of our previous player character who died in the last loop, and we just spawned in with a new version of ourself. This bag is a past version of us, warning us of what comes next. After Silent Hills was cancelled, Kojima released Death Stranding, which had a similar premise, so it wouldn't be surprising if he had the same concept planned for Silent Hills. I think this also ties in with the name change from Silent Hill to Silent Hills, suggesting parallel universes as well as the bag stating that he could see himself walking in front of himself. The concept of what Silent Hills could have ended up being is probably best left as a topic for another video, but to sum up that idea, I think the bag is our former self warning us of what's to come. Judging by the ever-expanding number of tally marks on the wall, I'd say we've been through this loop many times before. It could also be referencing other players going through the game as well. As far as what's in the bag and why Lisa placed it here, I would assume that it's probably our penis in the bag since that seems to be the area Lisa is removing something from, but the idea of our penis talking to us is a little too weird even for this video, so I'm leaning more towards some kind of physical embodiment of that monster inside of us. Regardless, Lisa might have the bag here as a way to torment us further because she seems to be getting a lot of enjoyment from watching us suffer. While we're on the subject of voices, there was another voice line that was really puzzling to me, and that was the normal radio voice that states that the father hung himself with a garden hose. If you listen carefully, as the radio broadcaster finishes his sentence, there's a background version of him saying that the father hung himself with an umbilical cord that he found in the garage. After killing his family, the father hung himself with a garden hose they had in the garage. With an umbilical cord they had in the garage. The normal radio voice isn't usually malicious or deceptive, so I wasn't sure exactly what it was hinting at. After our discussion of the talking bag potentially representing previous versions of ourselves, I think this broadcast is representing death and rebirth, or dying and respawning in game context. What I mean is that we have two broadcasts in parallel, one referring to death via garden hose, and the other mentioning an umbilical cord, which I think is symbolic of rebirth. We're both killed and reborn in the garage. As we just discussed, the cycle will continue to repeat. So now that we've gone through some of the noteworthy voices in the demo and their purpose, I want to try and determine what led to the murder of Lisa. 
Typically after learning that the father was hearing voices telling him that aliens are real and that he should kill his son, I would chalk it up to some isolated mental issue with that character in particular. But since this is Silent Hill and the radio broadcast is reporting that similar murders have been occurring recently in the same state and under similar circumstances, I think it's most likely that there is a supernatural entity pulling the strings. I also think it's manipulating fathers that are in a vulnerable state of mind and convincing them to murder their families. The pills we see scattered around the house could even be an attempt to medicate the voices. Assuming there is a higher power trying to manipulate fathers into killing their families, why are they targeting pregnant mothers? In previous Silent Hill games, mainly Silent Hill 1 and 3, a major plotline is preventing the birth of a demon god. Without getting too far in the weeds on those storylines, a woman is meant to give birth to a god, but the reality is that the god is more of a demon, so preventing its birth is the main priority. A fetus was especially prominent in Silent Hill 3 when our main character Heather vomits up the god fetus to remove it from her body, at which point a devout follower swallows the fetus in an attempt to birth it herself, and it doesn't end well. PT could be following in the footsteps of that lore slightly. I don't think it would have direct ties to those previous games because the lore is pretty complex, but PT could be pulling in aspects of the demon god being born through expectant mothers. Maybe they're trying to prevent a god's birth in this general location, or this could be a form of sacrifice. A sacrifice is never explicitly stated in PT, but requiring a sacrifice from the father as a way to prove himself worthy to ascend to the new dimension could make sense. I also think this would help explain why all the other fathers killed their families as well. Something similar actually happens in the Bible, where God tells Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac as a test of faith. God intervenes before Isaac is actually killed, since he basically just wanted to see if Abraham trusts him. Although I doubt our Swedish radio voice is this noble. The Bible could have been some kind of inspiration here, but that's ultimately just a theory. The point of killing unborn children in PT is still an aspect that is very unclear to me. Although, it seems like our fetus might have played a larger role in the main game based on the Silent Hills reveal trailer. Besides its crying throughout the demo, it speaks to us on two occasions. The first is in the bathroom, and it's clear the fetus doesn't have a high opinion of us. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly ten months back. The second is used in the intro to the reveal trailer. Dad was such a drag. Every day he'd eat the same kind of food, dress the same, sit in front of the same kind of games. Yeah, he was just that kind of guy. But then one day he goes and kills us all. He couldn't even be original about the way he did it. I'm not complaining. I was dying of boredom anyway. But guess what? I will be coming back, and I'm bringing my new toys with me. I'm pretty confident it's the same voice, but I think there are some key differences. The main one being that in the first clip, there is no radio distortion in the background, where in the reveal trailer, we can hear some radio static behind this voice. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Dad was such a drag. Every day he'd eat the same kind of food, dress the same, sit in front of the same kind of games. This could be signaling that the fetus will be an antagonist, or that it has grown into something more malicious. If you'll allow me to speculate even harder, the PT demo could have even been an origin of sorts for the fetus, with him pulling these strings in the full game. But I think the fetus, Norman Reedus, and where the full game's plot would lead us will have to wait until part 3 of this series. Before I start to sum things up, I do want to talk a bit about the fetus in the fridge and potentially how Lisa and the baby were disposed of after the murder. We don't know exactly what happens to Lisa's body, but I theorized in the last video that she could be buried somewhere based on the roaches and the PT game cover, but I don't have much else to back that up. However, the demo seems to suggest that the fetus was put in a fridge for some reason. We can hear its muffled screams from within the fridge, but we never hear anything regarding Lisa in the fridge. Not to say she isn't in there too, I'm honestly not sure, although this handprint on the side could be hers. I originally assumed it was the father's, but after looking at it more, it seems to be upside down. If the father touched the side of the fridge naturally, you would expect the fingertips to be pointing towards the top of the fridge. 
The way the handprint is placed here kind of looks like whoever is inside was able to reach a hand through the door. The handprint also looks more adult-sized, so this could potentially be Lisa's. But going back to the fridge, if we're meant to take this scene more literally, then I'm not sure why a fridge was chosen. Maybe the father was attempting to preserve the fetus in the freezer. I know that sounds crazy, but in some cases, murderers will place victims in a chest freezer until the body can be properly disposed of. In this case, the fetus could easily fit in the freezer. The bottom part could potentially hold Lisa as well. Along with this, the fridge could just be a method to discreetly transport their bodies without drawing too much attention. I'm also assuming it's not covered in blood at this point. I'm going to reach kind of hard here, but I think the father may have dumped the fridge in a river. I've always wondered why the fridge is suspended in air like this, and it kind of reminds me of when cranes pull cars up from the river, which could also explain the crazy amount of liquid dropping from the fridge, since hopefully this is more of a water and blood mixture, and not just entirely blood. The purpose of the ropes could have also been to keep the fridge from opening in the water. I know this is extremely speculative, but it's the best I've got so far. So at this point, I think I should try and sum up what I think is going on in PT as it relates to the father. My personal interpretation is that he was fired from his job which caused him to become an alcoholic. To support the family and their unborn child, Lisa was forced to get a job as a cashier, but had a manager who was attracted to her. I don't think she ever had an affair, but the father may have been jealous and suspicious, causing more of a strife between them. With the father in a vulnerable mental state, he starts to hear voices in the radio and possibly attempts to medicate himself. He continues to hear the voices, two in particular. One that is warning him that aliens are real and are on this earth, while also promising the father that he will ascend to a new dimension if he chooses to follow. There is also the second voice of a sinister broadcaster, who is more demanding and tells the father what to do, inevitably prompting him to murder his family. After which, the sinister broadcaster turns on him and threatens to tell everyone what he's done, at which point the father panics and attempts to hide the bodies. After the father hides the bodies and does whatever with the fridge, I think he goes to the garage and hangs himself with the garden hose. After he dies, he wakes up in the garage, which is where our demo begins. I also believe that this looping hallway is the father's own personal hell within Silent Hill. It might have even been manufactured by the fetus to remind the father of what he had done, and also for Lisa to torment us. Throughout the demo, we continually go downstairs to enter the next loop, which could be symbolic of our continuous descent into hell. This dissension theme was especially prevalent in Silent Hill 2, where James would often go down long stretches of stairways or fall down holes to further reinforce his dissension into Silent Hill, his own personal hell. A similar motif could be on display in P.T. Midway through the demo, we have the opportunity to be killed by Lisa. If she kills us, she removes something from inside us as we die. We then wake up in the garage again, this time with a bloody talking bag on the table. I believe that the bag represents the previous version of ourself that just died, and it attempts to warn us of what's beyond the doorway. When we enter the hallway, we're essentially given a redo and put in the same loop that we just died in. Although this time, we won't die and instead gouge it out to remove Lisa's haunting in this loop. We also learn that there is a monster inside of us which can be taken metaphorically or literally based on your interpretation. In the same handwriting, we later discover the message, I can hear them calling to me from hell, a phrase Lisa finds very amusing. <laughs> we'll later get that phone call as we're told that we've been chosen. Chosen for what exactly, I'm not sure, but based on the I can hear them calling to me from hell message, my assumption is that we are going somewhere worse. Or at least that's my personal interpretation of the father's story arc within P.T. As I mentioned earlier, P.T. left us with so many unanswered questions, and the clues we do have are often very vague and obscure, leaving much of the story open for interpretation. This is also a teaser for the full game, so part of the difficulty is trying to determine what aspects of the story are only for demo purposes, and what aspects allude to the overall story. I know a lot of people believe that the PT demo would have had no bearing on the story of Silent Hills based on this disclaimer, but I disagree. A lot of demos have the disclaimer that the demo or teaser isn't representative of the main game, but a lot of it usually winds up in the full game. Of course, I'm sure there are plenty of aspects within PT that would have been omitted in Silent Hills, but since there are so many fine details and purposeful enigmas within PT, I have to assume that there are answers, and a lot of these mysteries would have paid off during the full game's release, most notably 204863's meaning. So this video wasn't meant to be the definitive answer for what is happening in PT, but instead an analysis on the many clues and subtle hints within PT, along with my own interpretation of those clues. 
Like I said in the last video, I'm interested in hearing your views on PT and how you perceive the story. PT was originally created with the intention that people from around the world would have to work together to solve it, so I appreciate any additional ideas or perspectives you may have, and I'll use them to better inform any future videos that I make regarding PT. I'd also be interested to know if you'd like more PT videos beyond this one, and any aspects in particular you would like to see discussed. I know there was a long gap between part 1 and this video, and I apologize for that, so if there is an interest in future PT videos, I'll gladly do more and try to release them quicker. PT is a tough nut to crack, but it is a ton of fun to analyze and discuss, so I would definitely look forward to covering it more. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.